All right, the first thing you should be looking at is trying to figure out if there's a GCF and pulling out a GCF. So I look at the, the smallest number and I see a 2. Does 2 go into 10? Yes. Does 2 go into 12? Yes. That means 2 is my GCF. Now, I'm going to pull that 2 out, and then I have to figure out how to factor the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is divide everything by 2, and I get x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now you're factoring this. By this time in the ball game, you guys should be able to go ahead and see that x squared splits up as x and x. Now, I need the factors of 6. Well, I have 1 and 6, negative 1, negative 6, 2 and 3, negative 2 and negative 3. I need my factors to add up together to give me positive 5. So right here, I have positive 5, and I get plus 2 and plus 3. So you should have gotten 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now you can also write it, have the 2 and put x plus 3 times x plus 2. The order does not matter. Okay, now you need to try and do number 2. On this one, you should be looking first, again, as always, for the GCF. Now, I find my smallest number is 9. But 9 doesn't go into 12. Okay, so you got to think what other numbers go into 9. If that doesn't work, you can always go and put in the calculator... Take and put, go to math, arrow over to number, press 9. We're going to put in there 9, comma, and choose any of the other ones. I'll choose 12. Press enter. It tells me the GCF is 3. Well, does 3 go into 39? Yeah, 39 divided by 3 is 13. So I know my GCF is 3. So I'm going to put a 3 outside of it, and I always do this to make sure I don't forget it in my answer. Then divide every term by 3. Right here I get 4x squared plus 13x plus 3. Now I'm going to factor this. In the upper left-hand corner goes 4x squared. The bottom right goes 3. Something x, something x. Now, you're going to multiply these two numbers right here, and you get 12. I need the factors of 12 that give me 13. If you don't remember all the factors, you can go into the calculator and go into y equals and put in there 12 divided by x and press second graph. Then you can add up all these numbers. We'll see right here, 1 and 12, that equals 13. That equals the middle number, so that's what I need. So I'm going to put a 1 and a 12. Our next dilemma mean, is that the 4x squared can split up as 4x and x or 2x and 2x. Now, it depends. When I look here, I've got to figure out, like out of these two boxes right here, what's the GCF? Does 2 go into 1? Does 4 go into 1? No, so this has got to be the 1x. So it means it's not the 2x's, so this will be 4x. Now, 4 times what is 12? Plus 3. X times what is 1? Plus 1. So I have 4X plus 1 and X plus 3. If all you wrote was this, 4X plus 1 times X plus 3, 
If this is what you write down for the answer, it will be wrong. You have to have that GCF. This up here with the three in front, this is your answer. All right, let's try number two, uh, sorry, number three. So on number three, you look at this and you say, all right, is there anything I can look at for a GCF? There's nothing in front of that X squared, so there is no GCF. So I can go ahead and I can split up. The X squared splits up as X and X. Now I need the factors of 24 that add up together to give me an 11. You can put in the calculator to figure it out, but I know that it's 8 and 3. So that means that I'm going to put plus 8 and plus 3. Now I want to remind you because you have to know how to check this in the calculator. We need to know that when we go into the calculator, you have to put the original problem into Y1. So I have x squared plus 11x plus 24. And in Y2, I have x plus 8 times x plus 3. And I'll press second graph. And how do you know you're correct when you look at this? All of Y1 and Y2 are the same. You should be checking this after every problem. Okay, there's number four. Please do that now. All right, in number four, I'm going to look and see. I know that the smallest number is six. Does six go into 12? Yes, it does. Does six go into 21? No, it does not. So that doesn't work. So I'm going to find my GCF. And when I go here, I'm going to go math, arrow over to number, go to 9. I'm going to put in there 6, and I'm going to put in there 21. Because I need to find the GCF in those two. And it's 3. Well, does 3 go into that other number, go into 12? Yes, it does. So that means my GCF is 3. So you pull that GCF out. So I'm going to divide everything by 3. And we get 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. Now I have to factor this. So I draw my box. I have 2x squared minus 4. Something x, something x. I'm going to multiply these two together. I get negative 8. I need the factors of negative 8 that give me negative 7. That'll be negative 8 and positive 1. So it doesn't matter which uh, box you put it in. I'll put negative 8, positive 1. But what does matter is how 2x squared splits up. Out of these two boxes, 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 8. So that means the 2x goes here. The 1x goes up top. Now, that just depends. If you put the negative 8 down here, 2x will go above. What you have to look at and see is see if your multiplying works. 2 times what is negative 8? Negative 4. 4 times what is 1x? Plus 1. So I get 2x plus 1 and x minus 4. Don't forget that you have to have your GCF in front of it. So you have all of that. There's number 5. Try and do number 5 just like what we did. Okay, on number 5, you're going to look and see. 2 is the smallest number. Does 2 go into 3? No. So there's no GCF. So I'm going to draw my box. And I have 2x squared minus 9 
down here, something X, something X. You're going to multiply these two numbers. I get negative 18. I need the factors of negative 18 that, that add it together to give me negative 3. So I'm going to come over. Well, let's try again. Let's get this going on. All right. Oh, hey. There we go. Y equals. I'm going to put in there. Let me get these cleared out. Negative 18 divided by x, second graph. When I add them together, that gives me negative 17, negative 7. There's my negative 3, 3 and negative 6. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to put 3 and negative 6. Now, 2x squared splits up as 2x and x. If I put the x here and the 2x here, because I just don't know what to do with it, look at the way I've got it set up. 2 times what gives me 3? Is there any whole number that makes that work? No, so that means I put it in the wrong spot. So I have 2x and x. Now, does 2x times what give me negative 6? Negative 3. x times what is 3x? Plus 3. Your answer is 2x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now, you can also write it x minus 3 times 2x plus 3. Here's the next one. Okay, on this one, again, you look and see. My smallest x, um, coefficient is a 1. It's just the x squared. That means there's no GCF to pull out. So I know that x squared easily splits up as x and x. Now, I need to find the factors of negative 32 that add up together to give me negative 12. So I go to y equals and I put in there negative 32 divided by x, second graph. I want them that add up together to give me negative 12. These give me negative 14. Um, that gives me negative 4. Are there any? I'm looking through here and it goes up to 14. There is none that you go through and find negative 12. When you cannot find any, then your answer is not factorable. That's what you write. We could not factor it. There is no, There are no factors of negative 32 that add up together to give you negative 12. So this is what your answer would be. Number seven. Now the question was eight times four. Eight times four, but the problem is, is that you would have, you would have eight times four, negative eight times negative four, those give you positive 32 when you multiply. You're trying to find the factors of negative 32. So that would mean that it'd have to be negative 8 and positive 4 or positive 8 and negative 4. Okay, and those won't equal 12. Okay, there's number 7. First step here, I'm looking. Um, the smallest number is 6, but 6 doesn't go into 8. The next number I'm thinking of for 6 is 3. Does 3 go into 8? No. 2 is the GCF. So I'm going to take a 2 out of everything and write what is left. So divide everything by 2. I get 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. Now, I'm going to draw the box. 
I get 4x squared and minus 3. Something x, something x. You multiply 4 times negative 3 and get negative 12. I need the factors of negative 12 that give me 4. You can put them in the calculator and try and find them. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to think. I've got negative 12 and positive 1. That's not going to work, is it? Um, negative 6 and positive 2. Nope. Positive 6 and negative 2. Those right there, when I add them together, I get 4. So I have 6 and negative 2. Now, 4x squared can split up as 4x and x or 2x and 2x. Well, right here, does 4 go into both of these? No, 4 does not go into 2. Does 2 go into 4 and 2? Yes. So that means I'll be using 2x and 2x. 2 times what is 6x? Plus 3. 2 times what is negative 2? Negative 1. So I get 2x minus 1 and 2x plus 3. Don't forget to have your GCF on there. As you look at this problem, you try and figure out first, what is the GCF? When I look here, I see a 12. Okay, does 12 go into 33 evenly? If you don't know, just take 33 divided by 12, but no, it does not. So I need to find the GCF to see if there is one. So I'm going to go in the calculator. Make sure you're in your home screen right here. And you're going to press math. Arrow over to number, press the number 9. I'm going to put 12, comma, 33, and press enter. It tells me the GCF is 3. Does 3 go into 60? Yes, it does. 60 divided by 3 is 20. So I know that my GCF is going to be 3. So my GCF is 3, so that means I'll have 3, and then I'll have something else in my parentheses. Well, now I need to go and divide everything by 3. So I have 4x squared plus 11x minus 20. This is now what I'm going to use for the box to be able to factor. So I'm going to put in the upper left-hand corner 4x squared, the bottom right, negative 20. Something x, something x. You're now supposed to go 4 times 20, and you get negative 80. I need the factors of negative 80 that add up together to give me 11. So I'm going to go to the calculator and put in there into y equals negative 80 divided by x, second graph. I need it to be positive 11. <clears throat> I'm going to move down. I already see it here on my screen. Happen to be there. I have 16 plus negative 5. If you add these two together, you get positive 11. So I get 16 and negative 5. Those are my factors, and I'll put them in here. You can put it in any, any box, any one of those two boxes. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is how 4x squared splits up. It's going to either be 4x and x or 2x and 2x. Well, out of these two boxes, if I'm looking here, does 4 go into 5? No, that doesn't work. Well, does 2 go into 5? No. What about just an x? Is that in common in both of them? Yes. Well, let's hope the 4x works here. 4 times what gives you 16? Plus 4. x times what gives you negative 5? Negative 5. So I have 4x minus 5 
times x plus 4. This whole thing right here is my answer. The only other way you can have it written, or one of the other ways you can have it written, is x plus 4 times 4x minus 5. The order of the parentheses does not matter. The, yeah. This is not a difference of squares. Yes, it will. Okay, the next problem right here. Please try and do this problem. Pull out the GCF first. All right, on this problem, I'm looking, I know 8 goes into 24, but 8 does not go into 26. So I need to find the GCF out of 8 and 26. So I'm going to go back in here. Oh, there we go. I'm going to go to, well, maybe. There we go. Math, arrow over, number 9, and I'm going to put in there 8, comma, 26. It gives me a 2. Does 2 go into 24? Yes, it does. So that means that my GCF is 2. So I know I'm going to pull a 2 out, and I have to write what's left. Well, I've got to divide everything by 2. I'm going to get 4x squared plus 13x minus 12. Now that, what I just wrote, is what I need to put in the box. I need to put 4x squared minus 12. Something x, something x. I need to multiply these two numbers. I get negative 48. I need the factors of negative 48 that give me 13. So I'm going to go into the calculator, go to y equals, put in there negative 48 divided by x, second graph. And let me go back over here and start adding here. Let's see. 8 and 6, that's positive 2. 12 plus negative 4 is 8. and negative 3, that gives me positive 13. So I'm going to have 16 and negative 3. I'll just put those anywhere in those two boxes. Now, 4x squared splits up as 4x and x, or 2x and 2x. Well, out of these two boxes right here, does 4 go into 3? No. So, does a 1x go in here? Yes. Does 2 go into any of these? Does 2 go into 3? No. So, it can't be my 2x's. So, I've got to put the x here. And 4x goes here because it will be these two I need. 4 times what gives me 16? Plus 4. x times what gives me negative 3? Negative 3. So, I'm going to have... 4x minus 3 times x plus 4. Now, you need to know to make sure to check all your answers in the calculator. I'm going to put this original problem right here into y1. What I think the answer is into y2. So, as I go in the calculator, I go to y equals. You should be doing this after each problem. 8x squared plus 26x minus 24. And then I'll come down and put in my, what I think my answer is, 2 parentheses, 4x minus 3, and x plus 4. I'm going to press second graph. How do you know if you're right? All the numbers in Y1 and Y2 are the same. Okay, here we go. Here's the next one. Number 10. Okay, right now, here we go. We look at this and I'm like, all right, there's a 4 is my smallest number. Does 4 go into 5? No, 4 doesn't go into, well, 4 does go into 12, sorry. But 5 doesn't go into 12. 
There is no GCF. So I need to go, I'm going to go straight to the box. And I'm going to put in there 5x squared and 4. I have something x, something x. 5 times 4 is 20. I need the factors of 20 that add up to give me 12. When you look in the calculator, it will be 10 and 2. So I'll put 10 and 2. It doesn't matter which spot you put them in. I know the 5x squared splits up as 5x and x. Out of these two, 5 goes into 5, 5 goes into 10. So the 5x goes out here, and the x goes up top. 5 times what is 10? Plus 2. x times what is 2x? Plus 2. So my factors are 5x plus 2 times x plus 2. Again, you should be checking in the calculator after each one. Number 11. Okay, so on this one, I said to look and see, is, is there a GCF that you can pull out? Yes, a 2 divides into both of these. So I know a 2 is coming out. Now I get 4x squared minus 1. This is a difference of squares. It's a perfect square. It does not, it has a minus sign in between. It has two terms and you're missing the x term. So how can I split up 4x squared evenly? 2x and 2x. And one has to be positive, one has to be negative. That's what makes that middle term disappear. One, how does that split up? One and one. So I get, don't forget the GCF in front, and then you have 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. This is your answer right here. Number 12. There's number 12. Please do this one. As I look at this one, I see that there's only two terms. I see there's a minus sign in between. I see that the x term is missing in there, so this is going to be a difference of squares. There is no GCF. There's nothing that goes into 6 and, I'm sorry, into 9 and 16. How does 9x squared split up evenly? 3x and 3x. Now I know that I've got to have one of them be a positive and one a negative. 16 splits up evenly as 4 and 4. And this is what your answer should be. Number 13. Okay, right now all it's asking you for is your GCF. So you're trying to figure out what goes into 12, 24, and 15. Um, I know that 12 goes into 24 because that's half of it. But 12 doesn't go into 15. So I guess I need to find out what goes into 12 and 15. So I'll go here and, oh, let's see here. I'm going to go... Math, arrow over, press 9, put in there 12, comma, 15, and press enter. The GCF between 12 and 15 is 3. What does 3 go into 24? 24 divided by 3, it sure does. It gives you a whole number. So all it wants to know is what is the GCF, and your GCF is 3. Okay, and the comment was made that in the when people are going in here to do the GCD, the GCF, you cannot put in, you're not putting in the negatives. Do not put in the negatives, and you cannot put in the letters. It's only got to be the numbers and the whole numbers. Here's the last one that we're doing here together. Okay, on this one, 
you're looking and it says find the area of a square. What do we know about a square? All the sides are the same. So that means whatever I come up with for the factors, they have to be the same in both of these parentheses. Okay, so now I'm looking, and if I go to factor this, n squared splits up as n and n. And if they've got to be the same in both of them, what number times itself gives you 25? 5. So it'll be a 5 and a 5. Now the question is, what sign goes in there? Well, it's the... There's either going to be 5 and 5, or it's negative 5 and negative 5. The middle number is negative, so it's got to be negative 5 and neg negative 5. So the one of the lengths of the sides would be n minus 5. What's another way you could write this instead of writing it with two parentheses? n minus 5 squared. That means the same thing. 